This episode is being recorded out of Shop Talk Podcast Studio in Oak Park, Michigan. For more information, visit shoptalkpodcaststudio.com. Hey, friends. Hey, friends. Hey, Hey, friends. Welcome Welcome to the the Thank Us Later podcast. Get ready for some raw, entertaining, thought-provoking conversation between two girlfriends. Trust me, you'll be thanking us later. Oh. (laughs) Soul train. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I love that. We are here. It's Angel. And it's TSY. Today is a good day. It is. You know, we got another guest. Yes. I'm excited about this. You're going to welcome him back, though, for him. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> you know, I usually don't start it off. It's usually Tiffany. So. You know, listen, it's our show, so we no, do what we want ahead, to do. because you know what? You usually ask about my day and... Yeah, I was going to get like to that. that. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, thank us later, podcast. We are back for this episode five. Yeah, Episode five. I'm so excited. Yeah, so. Yes. How's your week been, friend? You know, I'm tired today. Yeah. That rain almost took me out. Like, just to drive over here, I saw two accidents. Mm. The freeway was backed up on the other side. Mm. Then I think somebody died on the side that I was on. It it was like four, like 20 cops around a stretcher. Okay. It was a little car. It had hit the wall. It was like really, really messed up. Oh my. And I, you know, in my, the way my anxiety set up on 696, I yeah. got off of 696 twice to get on the street and <laughs> went back. And then I was like, okay, no, I'm going back to the you street. Got, and you I got, got off back. twice? Yeah. Um, All right. But I made it here. Yes, you did. Thank God. Yes. Thank and I'm going to take the street home. Guys, we, we live very far, so there's that. I'll get there by, you know, hey. By, by 11, 30, 12. You're right. <laughs> you know, just in time to go to bed. How was your week? You know, it's it's been good, sort of, kind of. I've been getting a lot of different signs. Hmm. Um, I went to therapy this week, and... I'm, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to write her an uh, invoice because she be stealing my stuff. So I told her right. that um, I demoted some friends and I was like, she was like, you demoted them? I was like, yeah, I demoted them to associates. She's like, I'm going to use that when I talk about boundaries. Girl, give me my credit. <laughs> Using my stuff. No, that's right. She makes so, so much money for her. Yeah, not- right? Yeah. But no, but it's just been interesting, an interesting week. Mm-hmm. But good though. Yeah. I saw two rainbows. And the, did you tell the folks that you videoed it on your drive over? I definitely I did. I videoed it um, because I needed to get it. I never saw two rainbows. They were like really clear. So I videoed I mean, it. It's fine. What does two rainbows mean? What? Oh, what did it mean? Good luck. Something. It did mean good luck. Like good, good luck. Fortune. Good fortune is coming. Yes. So I believe that in the name of Jesus. Yes. Claim it. Mm. But we have a. Yes, a very friend. special we guest. Do. I'm excited about this one, well, you y'all. Can, well, friend, you gonna go ahead and give her a good intro? I want to give okay. a great intro, guys. Okay. This boss woman that we're bringing today. Oh my <laughs> gosh, she's gonna make me so proud. Like I'm bringing her on, but she is an older cousin of mine. Okay. Um, just a little backstory. I am gonna let her get into it. I'm gonna, you know, take my I moment. Mean, um, as she before should. she does. <laughs> Um, back in the day, say I was in back elementary, in this big cousin of mine, okay. you know, my granny used to say, hey, you know, you hold, you know, you need, Tracy, you need to hold Angel's hand the whole way to the elementary, make sure that she crossed the street, look both ways, get there safely. Oh. We would go, we would walk down the street, granny would watch us walk down the street, mm-hmm. and we turned that corner, I let Tracy's hand go. <laughs> <laughs> I walked myself to where I needed to be. It was a fight. You it was, was a, a boss, fight. baby. All the, well, that street had to be, I think it's called Eveline. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a fight. She fought me for that hand. <laughs> I didn't give up. Oh, walk home. So I'm going to tell Granny. <laughs> but I Why was you a boss, baby? I don't know. It's always been like that I was my like, but if you was my little cousin. And she's my older cousin. She is three years older than me. She is a boss woman. Mm. She's a real estate agent. She okay. is making me so proud in the 313. All right. I can brag on her, but of course it's the three one three spotlight. So that's but really we, her we're job. We're not doing but. a three one three spotlight friend yet. We just so I'm kind of jumping a gun. I'm yeah, taking her you, shine. You is just well, a little okay, bit. Let me so just, just introduce her because she just sitting here and we all right. We, we want to <laughs> make sure we, like, we want to make sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> we want like, to make sure coming, that okay. the Thank You Slater podcast viewers and listeners know who's here. They hear the giggle friend. You Damn. Gotta... Welcome, Tre- Latrice Posey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so very much. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> she over here just trying to tell your business. I was going to go down the whole history. Right. <laughs> Listen, like her being a boss baby, you should have spanked her butt. But thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Today. Yeah, we are definitely going to get into that 313 spotlight for oh. friend. But I just wanted to, and I'm going to start with you first since you said last week. Ah. And then start with you and you probably don't got one. Okay. So who's your... Woman History Month today. Who's who you putting in now? I'm gonna hit y'all with another one from the three one three. Aaliyah. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I knew y'all was gonna like that one. I killed y'all with that one. I'm com- wait because I got y'all with Riri before Aretha Franklin, and then I'm coming back with the Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's the, I'm hitting you with the heavy so hitters. So what, what what history did she make? Man, she made all of that good music. Aaliyah was on my wall before Destiny Child hit the wall. Aaliyah was hot like fire. Hot like fire. And t- what? What is she alumni from? From DSA. Woo woo. And you came from DSA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Friend look like. Uh, I, I, mean, no. cause, I, I mean, cause the Women History Month is like women that made an impact in history. I feel like she rocked the boat. <laughs> Literally she rocked the boat. Oh, okay. <laughs> what you got? Well, I have Regina King. That's a good one. Yes, because she is phenomenal. She is. I loved her since 227. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you've been Bring a fan. Oh, I've been a fan because I love her green eyes. She's a beautiful black woman. Yes. And, you know, she got all those awards and everything. And, you know, I... Obviously, what happened to her this year? Was yeah, it, yeah her, you know, her son year, passing. Her son. So it's just like that's heavy, and she's, yeah, still, heavy. And she's still just out here. And because I think she's supposed to be, um, she's supposed to be uh, being a judge on something uh, coming up. And I was just like, really already? Like I, I would, I'd be like, f you in Hollywood. Yeah, she's but, trying to yeah. stay busy, probably to grieve and stuff. You yeah, know? but that's she's, her only child that he passed. Yeah, away? oh, see, gang, gang. Yeah. Goodness gracious. You yeah. got one, Tree? I want to shout out all of the women that are realtors. Oh! Right. Well, go ahead. Because you about to go into your 313 spotlight to make it happen. So it's, it's Women's History Month. Mm-hmm. And I recently found out that 65% of realtors that are active right now are women oh and that was not the case like this was a male-dominated industry so i just want to shout them out yes i love it (laughs) yes that's some real stuff right there that makes me proud of that kind of give me chills because Mm -hmm. i could see like women taking over real estate period because we are really good talkers communicators and we pay attention to houses so Mm -hmm. even we're telling like oh this is why you should we give them the vision yeah where somebody is like a male in sales say he's selling cars hey Mm -hmm. you know horsepower that's how he sound (laughs) oh you gotta buy this one (laughs) guys yeah women is like can you that's how you sound guys yep like like, all you gotta do friend take this wall down do this do this Mm -hmm. and then boom you got exactly Mm -hmm. what you were looking for you know you you have to be specific and just kind of give them the vision and be thorough and detailed and I don't think all the guys are as, theor- as thorough and detailed as well. I agree. You're right. Or usually the guys need like a teammate to be a woman. A lot mm-hmm. of the, I noticed um, that a lot of realtor men they, they have, have women with, with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to work in a real estate office as a secretary or whatever. But I a lot of the like uh, real estate agents they had either their girlfriend or it was just a younger girl to help sell the houses. It was like out in uh, Farmington Hills and Bloomfield Hills, mm-hmm. and that they always were a team. And I was like, I, wa- I always wonder why, but it makes sense now. Like, boot them men to the side and take over women. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go into our 313 spotlight. And we got another one that is in the bit. I'm so excited. Me that, too. I, we love to talk about it, but it's good for you guys to sell yourselves mm-hmm. and let people know. Thanks to work off of my plate. So friend, friend, finish your intro to the three one three spotlight because you was given so oh, it was great. And I, I got want you, more. I know you did. I've got more. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, Tracy. You know, I'm just really proud of her because just going into it, she has she came walked in with her umbrella first of all. So I don't I got mean, the she, attention of all of us, all of the whole like the building, yes. like the, the what the, is that? Yeah, Jay was like. Um, 
I like that. I ain't never seen an umbrella <laughs> like that before. That's her umbrella. Like, so she not only is a real yes. estate agent, she also has a, a she's a CEO of Adori Umbrellas. Ooh. And these umbrellas, y'all literally had to see when she walked in. Like, it's gloomy Guys, outside. they're amazing. Yeah. Like, they're amazing. Whole thing lit up. Like, shine on me. I'm shining. In, in the coverage, <laughs> the coverage, right? Did you know yeah. like how oh, no, big I it really the covers You're like, whole... nothing, no water is getting on you. No. You, yeah. you came here dry. I did. <laughs> Tell us more. So Adore Umbrellas are specialty umbrellas. You can follow us on Instagram at Adore Umbrellas. And that's A-D-O-R-E-I Umbrellas, U-M-B-R-E-L-L-A-S. Okay. So the specialty umbrellas, they're fiberglass. So you know how working downtown, the wind would just come Ooh, and it would destroy you. your umbrella. Take you out. I said no more. It go, it fold up. No yeah, more. Yeah, you do flip back. It, oh, <laughs> and, and then I used to just go like this, like F it. <laughs> right. So with the Adore umbrellas, they are super wind resistant. They mm. don't flip backwards and they are super cute. They light up. So we always say, you know, why have an umbrella you like when you have one that you adore? Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, like where that. did the concept come with the lights? So we just wanted something different. So initially, uh, me and my partner, we started off with looking at umbrellas with fans, okay. looking at umbrellas that squirt water, oh. like for the beach. <laughs> like it's, for the it's, hot days. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I got excited. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> see, now, see, now we need to expand it. We need to expand. No, seriously. No, it'd be hot. <laughs> so we saw the light concept and we were just like, that's not anywhere. Yeah. You know, so we were just like trying to think of a way to become rich you know and we were just like hey <laughs> we're gonna get these we're gonna get somebody to make them and then we're gonna try and get in walmart so, okay still you know still a work in progress you know oh yeah walmart, you're gonna you're get there ma'am because <laughs> you catch your attention so Listen, that's the first everybody Listen. loves them everybody I'm, everywhere I'm, we go everybody yeah. loves them it's 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 not anywhere i mean we can go to the hospital and they're like where you get that umbrella from i'm like oh i sell these you know so um, awesome yeah, 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 yeah i'm but, gonna get me one guys yeah it's like the perfect day because it's because i mean it's, and it's, it's spring perfect. it's spring it's April, yeah you know? so it's time to get them yes spring may flowers yep. okay come on now the focus is so tell us about real estate. Come on, girl. Real estate. Real estate has always been something I think I was passionate about. First of all, this person right here to the right has always, always pushed me. Like, if I'm trying to start any endeavor, she's like, she's always been bossy. Mm -hmm. since. Oh, she's been boss, baby. Okay. Been bossy I can see that. my entire I can life. See that. Like, <laughs> who's the older cousin again? Right. And I, when I first, I, I was in Florida for about seven years. Mm -hmm. I came back home and she's like, okay, it's go mode. Like, you got to do this, then you got to do that. Like, she had everything planned out for me. And I was don't just, come here until you know that you got a plan. If you come mm. back, have a plan. She was bossy. She was very bossy. Okay. She was? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, you've done this long enough. Okay, it's time to do something else. So <laughs> I started off uh, in 2014. I took the real estate class. I mm. wanted to do real estate. But then when I went to go meet with a brokerage, I went to go meet with Keller Williams. And mm -hmm. they were like, hey, it's 100% commission. I was like, mm. And then I got an offer with Quicken, and I was just like, 100% commission or salary mm. and commission. So I was scared. So I didn't do it. Okay. And Ooh, that fear. Yeah, that fear. Mm. That Ugh. fear is something. It will stop you from doing so Anything. many things. That's why I got off the freeway so twice today. Oh, my God. <laughs> Took me a little longer to get here. Guys, you see how she put oh that in there? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I didn't do it. Okay. But then opportunity came, and I just was just like, do it. <sighs> like, am I going to do it? I'm still going to do mortgages. Like, what am I going to do? And yeah. then I was just like, you know what? Forget it. It was the pandemic. It was just kind of like, mm -hmm. if you're going to take this chance, this is the time to do it. You, you know? know, it reminds me of that um, old commercial. Do y'all remember? It was it Everest. What are you yeah. doing on your couch? Oh, yeah. yes. I didn't like, remember that. Those. That always yeah. motivated me. Like, yep. just do it. Did it like, mm -hmm. It did. I so did you go to Everest? No. 
Uh, you never saw the commercial? No, I, I seen it. <laughs> oh. I just wanted to know because she said it motivated her so I wanted to know if she it enrolled. It motivated me to get off the couch oh, every time. Oh, got, got you. Got you. Get okay. my ass up when it's hard. Oh. Right. <laughs> I, and, I, and, and I'll make posts like that like in my Everest commercial voice and I'm like, everybody didn't see that commercial. <laughs> and, and I don't know if that was just like a Detroit commercial. Thing, right? or, I think like, it was a Michigan thing. I don't think, think it was. what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't think they know. Like, what is she? Or maybe Midwest. I feel like people from the Midwest They had to have some Everest. Mm-hmm. They definitely didn't know what I was talking about when I was. <laughs> I wonder where that guy is. I wonder if he off the couch awesome. somewhere. You I'm gonna know? Google. He he thing. should be off the couch somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Google him and find out where he at. He need to come on here. I got. I'm like you motivated me, man. He he was definitely motivational. Anytime you feeling down in the dumps. You just got to listen to him and your. You hear his your, voice your come on. Voice. I used to get up like, oh, shit. She was saying, right. y'all better. <laughs> y'all better tell him. <laughs> so I started off uh, last April, actually. I, I'm, I'm coming on a year. In real estate? In real estate. Okay. How's it been going for you? It's been going really good. Now, it's it's definitely had its ups and downs. It's it's been like a little roller coaster. But for this to be my first year, it's been extremely successful. Mm. Oh, good. I've always been super super motivated and just I in my I, in my mind I'm like oh my first year of real estate I'm gonna make two fifty. I just was very very optimistic. That's and good as you should be. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a learning experience. Um, but. It's taken off. Yeah. It's taken off like crazy right now. I have, did you have a mentor um, when you got into real estate or did you just jump out there and try to figure it out yourself? So I did. I, my, one of my good friends that inspired me to go into real estate, her shout out to Future Davis. Future um, Davis. Hey, Future Girl. <laughs> she inspired me. A lot of people that I was talking to that were real estate agents because Prior to real estate, I did mortgages, and I used to work with a lot of realtors. And they were just like, now is not a good time to get into real estate. You know, there's no inventory. There's no money. People aren't making money. People aren't making less than 30 grand. And, you know, like, I just had a lot of people saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Mm. Right. And she was just like, don't listen to them. Like, just their success doesn't determine your success. Come on now. Come on now. What? <laughs> yeah, she, she's a good person to have in my tribe. That's good. Yeah, you got to have some people did in you your hear, tribe. Did you hear what she coined it? Finding your tribe is very important. Some people don't yes. find, like, you have to add new friends. You know, we was talking about yeah. that. Like, some people don't know new friends. No, yeah. like, yeah. they're necessary. Because as you grow, you're going to need those different people. And so that's different, awesome. Different yeah. ways, yes. And she just pushed me. She was just like, no, you can make this. You can make that. You can make 250 You can make more than that. Like, you could do this. You could do that. She saw your potential before mm-hmm. you even saw it. Yep. And it's crazy because I met her doing mortgages. Like, wow. I would, I refer my mom, you know, to her. And awesome. Like, it's crazy. Like, we started off as the mortgage lender and the realtor, and then it turned into being a realtor and now we have a group that we've been working on growing what's I, the name of your group yeah, oh, what's that name group is, I'm like we got a singing group or something <laughs> Our group is called the Elevated Collective. Elevated so, Collective. It's just all positive. Is it any vibes. men in that group? Not yet, but we're coming for them. Really? We're coming for them. She said we're coming for we're them. Coming you for bringing you them guys. over Did to the Elevated that? Collective? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Y'all, I've been seeing y'all online, and mm. I'm say, hey, that is like getting formation type of shit. Like okay. that's what I think of when I see like y'all. Your photo shoots and the way y'all move is a unit. And I feel like, because it, it's all women, all black women Ooh, right now. Can we say that? All so black it's all women. melanated women mm-hmm. up in here? And when I tell you they come and correct, it's like, uh, let me just brag on them a little bit. Come on, friend. they like come with a whole ensemble matching each other. Like, okay. Oh, like we Color are coordinated. the collective. Yes. Color like, coordinated. <laughs> okay. And I can tell like y'all move as a unit and I feel like sometimes people can't come together because they think oh you know she's trying to outshine speak on it friend I want to go over by myself come I don't on. want too many people know what I'm mm-hmm. doing but because y'all came together it seemed like you are making such a bigger impact you elevate we mm-hmm. see you you know versus you see yeah. a bunch of women in real estate now but y'all coming together mm-hmm. as a unit I'm like mm-hmm. oh whoa they a problem Mm-hmm. They come and like, and I like it's, that. It's power in numbers. And I think what I like most about our group, I mean, granted, we're still a part of an even larger group, you know, as well. But once it starts to get really big, you know, people kind of, you yeah, know. Chaotic a little bit. Yeah. Not even necessarily chaos. Just, you know, you kind of mesh with who you mesh with. Not to say mm. you don't mesh with everybody, but 
once your group starts to grow and become so large, it's hard to know everybody, Mm -hmm. you know? And with this group, it's just we hold each other accountable. Like, we send text messages daily, like, okay, what's your day looking like tomorrow? Wow. And it's just like 7 a.m. doing this, going to the gym, blah, 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 blah. Like, from start to finish. And then it's, okay, everybody check in. Did y'all do what y'all supposed to do today? Mm. And then, like, we'll meet. I like that check in. I like that check in. And it's crazy. At the end of the day. day. You would like that check in. (laughs) She put locators on her friends. So, the collective would be on. Wait a minute. Where you say you at? You're lying. (laughs) <laughs> she calling me yeah <laughs> but I'm saying though because it's one thing to say like hey wh- what your day is looking like but to follow back up like so mm-hmm. did you do it mm-hmm. what you do what you end up doing what you didn't do what you gonna do tomorrow like I like mm-hmm. that yeah it's it's really good like I mm-hmm. I've started going to the gym and wow. trying to work you know like it's just it's positive it's mm-hmm. all positive can you and say that again I love it's this it's all positive and yes. I just love it and so, I love this for you I mean I yeah. just feel like you're supposed to have those people surround yeah. You, you know, mm-hmm. to push you because you have always been driven. Now, you know, I'm gonna let you have your like, I'm gonna let you have your moment. But like, she's always she? been driven. Like, <laughs> Tracy has always like, okay, we're gonna tap into our topic or whatever. But I feel like no, no, no. in yeah. her head. Yeah. She was like, okay, I'm going to Michigan State. This was a very long time. Mm-hmm. Like, this is like, she knew what she was going to do. Mm-hmm. I am going to be this. Like, she studied a lot. Like, Tracy to me, what is the, she was a good child. I'm going to say that. Like, everything she did, Tracy tithed the whole time. Like, she moved away, but still, still, sent, her, <laughs> still sent her tithes back to her church home oh, while wow. she was away. Like, she's that person that is like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do mm-hmm. it, you know? So, her zeroing in on this is like, no, oh, yeah, she's going to make it. Like, it's right. no doubt. It's no like, brainer. That's why I seen it was a no brainer for mm-hmm. Future to say, hey, you can do this because it's everybody knows what you're capable of. You know, it's just a matter of you acting on it and mm-hmm. you doing it. So it's like, oh, my. Oh, this they about to bust the door down. The collective is coming. I'm Oop. excited. <laughs> I'm excited. That's the, but, ooh, yeah, no, it's, it's it. a wonderful it's a wonderful experience to just, you know, especially coming from like working in corporate America mm-hmm. and you know how you work. And different places, and they're like, everybody's a team, we're a family, but really, you're not a family yeah. because mm-hmm. if somebody gets sick, nobody's checking on them. You know, like it's mm-hmm. it's not really a family, and this is like, it's like a real life family. Like they, we get on each other's nerves too, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's that good get on your nerves. Like why are you eating that? Like one of the girls, I was in a meeting one day, she grabbed a can of pop away from me and was just like, I'm just gonna pour this out. Oh, you're gonna good. be okay, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, because you're working on drinking water, remember? I'm going to bring you back some water. You know, so it's just like... I don't know. Like, I, I care it. about you. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I'm not going to let you. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's what friends are for. Yep. And so, then, like, even with friendship. deals that we have, nobody is, like, we're not in competition with each other. That's you know, another It's good like, thing. like, oh, like, I have a commercial deal going on right now. And nobody's like... Oh, you know, hating or you know, spiteful. Like they're just like, oh my god, how's it going? You know, like and it's genuine. Like what is the commercial deal? So a commercial deal is like this, like this building, like a Mm -hmm. business, like an actual building. Instead of it being like a a residential, like a single family home or something like that, like an apartment building Mm -hmm. or a Popeyes or you know, just any type of commercial space. Wow. So that's that's. it's it's definitely a lot more zeros in commercial than it is in residential. All right. So they just have been very supportive, and it it it's it's no spite, you know, and mm-hmm. it's just beautiful because you know people have stigmas like yeah. oh black women can't work together or women that can't work part. together. That's true. Or it's drama. That's and true. People do say that. It's not. Yeah. And I love it, and I oh. hope that you guys just still like move on that. I think y'all will. I mean, yeah, they like will. It, it sounds like yeah. it, so I don't see anything wrong. Anything is they're gonna just elevate. Yeah, uh, elevate. let me Did find you out. You drop it. Elevate. <laughs> Come on, elevate it, collective. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you? What would you say um, is your ultimate goal in real estate? Ooh. I don't know. It just seems like the more I learn, the more the sky is the limit. Like, oh, you're thinking too small or you're, you know, and then like, especially recent. So as of recently, I've been on, I've been doing a segment on uh, 107.5. I heard you. On on Sunday. Okay. So 
I've been getting all kind of calls. Now, sometimes it's uh, some wacky calls, you know, some people that... Tell us something. Because <laughs> we, like, we like the tea <laughs> here. Wacky um, um, ah, Just so, give us one. So one, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. Mm. I can't really tell. Okay, so they. So they <laughs> called me and was just kind of like, um, I just feel like I could just talk to you for hours. And I thought they was going to go into Wait, the song. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it was just like, you know, you're my new best friend. And I was just like. Wait, wait. Yeah. Like calling for business, but yet I just need a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it was just kind of like. So how did you end that? How did you get right. out of it? How you pivot off of that? So I, I worked at Quicken as a banker. So I knew how to pivot, you know. Shout out to that. Definitely, definitely useful training. So right. I, I just hit a ignore pivot. Boom. You know, in and out. It's just like, okay, got to go. And it's just like, can I call you again tomorrow? Ooh, and no. I was just like, they said, tomorrow. you going to work for this house. Like, no. Absolutely no, you defi- cannot. You definitely can. You'll be blocked. <laughs> Like, you know what? So, I ain't want to buy a house with you anyway. You ain't want to yeah. put no time in with me. But for the most part, it's been very, very productive. Like, yeah. you know, okay. just even just planting seeds, well, educating how about people. You tell us about that brunch. I saw that you guys hosted a brunch, and I thought that was awesome for networking. It was amazing. Whose idea was that? So that was one of the girls in Elevator Collective. That was Cairo's idea. It was her passion project. She wanted to do a brunch, but she said she wanted to do something for new home buyers that had never been done. That she was like, awesome, mm. right? Good idea. She was like, no, because I was like, hey, we can have it at a church. She was like, no, Latrice, we're not having it at a church. No, like, she she's very, very direct in what That's she wants. Good. And she knew Is she a exactly. Libra? That, I'm mm, not sure of. She sounded like it, but go ahead. But she <laughs> knew exactly what she wanted. to get back to us. <laughs> she knew exactly what she wanted. She knew she wanted drapes and, mm-hmm. you know, like, she mm-hmm. wanted to be very, very fancy. And Tiffany, it was at the same place that you had your bridal shower at. <laughs> oh! Yes. Okay, yeah. I love that place. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I, was I, like, love I love that place. That was a good brunch. Place. Yeah. So we were, we... We invested quite a bit to host it because, I mean, we wanted it. But y'all get your name out there. So that Mm -hmm. was a good investment. It was. And we had a really good turnout, too. That's good. You know, because the venue only held like 100 people. And we were just like, even if we get 80, Mm -hmm. you know, like we'll get some good, you know, information out. Mm -hmm. Right. Educate the community. And then hopefully get some people that want to work with us. And do it again. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, yeah, I can't wait. You you know, word of mouth. Like, hey, did you go Mm -hmm. to that brunch at Elevated Collective put together? It It, was nice. They had some good food. Oh, for real? They were coming. That's what they're going to say. Okay. Yeah, they did say it was good food. See? (laughs) It was really pretty. We had uh, DJ Jerry Springer. Okay. He played music. So after the event, people were ballrooming and hustling. Oh, God, that was a good ballroom. (laughs) You can't stop me when they turn on the ballroom song. I'm getting out there. Oh, you are? Do a few spins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. We got, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Listen, we do, but I do want to go ahead and get into this melanated news before we get into everything else. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. No. What? Our TV show recap. Oh. It'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be quick. You yes. Know. I don't really have much. Mm-hmm. Um, So, for in your, your shows. My shows first? Yes. Okay, so I really into This Is Us. You like it? I like This Is Us. I'm kind of back. I need to catch up on This Is Us, though. Okay. Guys, you don't know this is the last season. Like, this is really, really I know. I just figure I'm just going to binge watch everything. You're going to cry. So you better have enough tissue. I'm always crying when I watch that show. It it gets you right. And I'm a thug. So it really makes me upset. Like, why y'all? It's like when William died. Oh. That took you out, huh? That took me out. Yeah. I was just like, hey, why he keep losing parents? And not only that, like, we had just got used to William. Mm -hmm. And daddy, like, oh, you just came back. We want you a little longer. The grandkids, like, oh, we got a papa. Yeah. Then he gone. Well, I don't (laughs) think they said that. (laughs) Oh, we got a papa. (laughs) In my head, I felt like that's what they was thinking. Okay. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, This particular episode was about Kate. Oh, okay. So, um, I think that her and Toby are going to get a divorce. <gasps> mm-hmm. wow. He's working in San Francisco, but he is like, he lost weight. And I think that's bottom oh, cake. You know, of course she always had issues when she, he lost And Kenny's yeah. like, that is my least favorite character. That's what Aww, he said. Oh, see, gang, gang. He, Toby? Kenny does or not Kate. like Kate because he don't like her. He said she just got a bad, nasty attitude. And she did as a kid. But then this is like, she's like, I like fat, fat Toby. 
She said that? She said that. Wow. Well, I mean, it's real, you know. Lose some weight. And then... She said that she don't like the nice new dressing, um, know how to dress Toby, the kind that works all the time, the kind that... Um, he's such a sweetheart, though. Isn't like, he, he is. is sweetheart to he her, from like, what I remember. He's like her dad, though. Like, that, the husband that yeah. everybody wants. Like, right. let me fly home and surprise you, even though I have to work. Yes. Let me go and wish you a happy birthday before the night is over. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's still not enough, right? Yeah, no. Because I feel like how long can he coddle your insecurities. That's what I'm getting. She through. empty though. She's very empty. But how long is your mate supposed to? How do you? But he okay. made that decision though. No, when he married she's asking for a lot from him. Like it's like she's, um, you know, well, you, you know, um, we, I, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. What about what he feel like? Mm-hmm. You know, like I need. You know, I got these kids all the time. Toby coming back and forth for you while he working out of the state, and he's trying to. And not only that, he's working his job because you know their one their one son is blind. He's thinking about the futures because as soon as he had the baby and found out the baby had a disability, he felt he like he points. had to work. Mm. You know, as a man, like you looking at it like, oh, he's just trying to chase a job. He's trying to have a a foundation for y'all to so he could take care of his son. He said all of this tech stuff that he's Jack's going to need. Somebody got to pay for it. Yeah. So he got in a tech job so that he can have the benefits for later. He thinking about the future. And it's like, she's like, I just want to sit and watch Netflix and chill with the old fat Toby. And I'm hallucinating. You got to you gotta understand both sides. I do. Though. I try. Because mm. it's like, yeah, she, she, yeah, he's working, but she still wants that time. He know? made it. That's Not it, only I that, think. he tried to make like a whole date thing for her. When she came, he's like. Why she can't just move to where he is? Though? She And you know, that was another thing. So he he found a house. He got a house with something like a jungle gym in the backyard. Yeah, it's a nice house. He got the room, so the kids are close by, but not too close where they can have their time. Like he thought it all out. When she came, all he they was like, "Hey, Kate, the realtors knew her. Hey, Kate, how's Haley and Jack?" And and so she was like, "Well, how long were you doing this?" Like that was her first initial mm, response. Like wow. you've been doing this behind my back. Yeah, because he didn't want to worry you with it. He wants you to come here and be comfortable. That is like to me a husband like. Set up home yeah. so you can just bring the kids and you can be comfortable. Mm-hmm. But she don't see it like that. And I think that she just want to hate on hate on Toby. That's not good. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's my show. And then Bel Air. Anybody? I've only seen two episodes. What? Get into this black excellence, y'all. She this is particular. Black excellence. Nobody watch it but her. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a lot of people watch Bel Air. I've been seeing some Facebook reviews like, it's a great show. It's not up for debate. Blah, blah, blah. And then oh. I heard some people saying it's too dramatic because they wanted the fun. Mm-mm, we don't want that no more. You don't want the fun? I want this real time. I mean, I don't the mind deal. the drama, but it's some real triggering, um, you know, Topic. s- topics that they have for me. That Not for me. Oh, really? Which I d- no. You don't want it. We'll talk offline. Oh, no. But I saw so I just oh, okay. was like, I'm good. You, you said too much? Too yeah, I'm good. I, I'll, leave, I'll let y'all have it. Okay. Well, I'm loving it because um, Lisa and Will, her mom, Lisa, Lisa first of all, um, Will's mom came back from Philly. Oh. Aunt Viv and Aunt, and Aunt Vi clash. Well, we always kind of felt it, right? Yeah, the, they the did. Mm-hmm. But this like get into it where it's that sister um, why? Like it's, it's oozing out like it's Is finally. she like super fly too? Because I feel like every, I'm like even Jeffrey, like why is Jeffrey so fine on right. the show? <laughs> yeah, like. she is fine. Like it's mother, the mother daughter that's like, oh, you look just like your mama but y'all both look like y'all got some good jeans and some good skin. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, I love the casting. Like it's all, and then she sh- looks like, sh- she act like she from Philly. She got a little edge to her. But she came back and she was like, I feel like the reason why um, Viv got all of this stuff is because of me. Like, I'm the older sister. I took care of mama when you decided to go off and do what you had to do. And then also, um, when you wanted to paint, I bought you your first canvas. So I feel like she wants some type of appreciation. And then she also As big sisters do. They take care of their siblings. I feel like, see, that's what I'm talking about. Tap into it and make us feel and and make it. Tap into it. Yeah, tap into it like. (laughs) Get to the reality of the show. And I love it. And then it was like, you did it in front of the kids. So the kids like, dang, um, mm. let's go talk to them. Let's go um, see what's going on. So I'm into it, y'all. Y'all got to check it out. Okay. Well, I only have my one show. What? Snowfall? Because I haven't watched so far yet. I told you we, I was going to wait for a couple episodes so I can get into it because the first episode was very slow. So, But I know you're catching up. So by the time I start watching it, we can, we'll recap. But I was talking about my show, Merit at First Sight. Oh, tell so, us. Do you watch that? i never seen that one. My, you know, most people didn't. But 
so last week, because I, I got a question, friend, I want to I wanna know. Mm. So the one I was telling about, Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan. He got mad at her. Now he mad at her because she had an app, a dating app on her phone. Now, this is an experiment. Again, they meet each other at the altar mm-hmm. and they get, they get married. It's eight weeks. And at the end of the eight weeks, they decide if they're going to stay married or get, an, get it or not. He's like, well, you knew you were coming on this show to get a husband and blah, blah, blah. Why do you have a date nap? The date nap, she doesn't even, it's not even like you can, you can't log into it. It's like she probably just had it. It's been on there. He got so mad at her. And I'm like, who gets mad at he that? He just want to get out of there. He like, I you said, think that's what it is? Yeah, Elijah Wan been acting up for far <laughs> too long. <laughs> Elijah yeah. Wan won out before he even in for real. And yeah. He's just trying to make so it hard it, so she can give they up. They pick the husband for them? So yeah, the experts pick the husband and wife. They pair you together. So okay. you, because, okay, because I was going to go on there. So what you do <laughs> is, I really was a couple years ago, I was, it was about to be over. But you, like, they put you through a whole rigmarole as far as the application. Then they come to your house. Then they interview your parents and your family. If you got like siblings or whatever, they you go through like I think they said five things, and then they finally be like, "All right, y'all can be together." Like these, this is who I match you with. So you don't see who your husband is gonna be or your wife gonna be until you're at the altar. Oh wow! It's like a blind date, but you're getting married. Wow. I've been watching it ever since I think they on season twelve. I love this show. <laughs> Dang, that many seasons. <laughs> yeah, I love this show. Wow. It's really good because it, um, like, because I watch it, you know, with my husband now. He like, he even is into it, so we'll pause. He be like, you know, we'll dissect it and everything. It's really good because it's like, you know, they're newlyweds, but they're in accelerated newlyweds because they got to get to know each other, and some of them begin to know each other, and then others <laughs> we gotta see if it's right, and then others be like, no, you're a stranger, so no, I ain't doing that. But I'm like, but this your husband, it's your yeah. wife, like, why? Would, I mean, I get you, my husband, let go. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, especially they just probably don't want to be looking like a fool after it's all done. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And some of them be like, because Elijah Wan, and I forget what his wife name is, they said they didn't have sex. Boy, bad. You had sex with them dirty drawers because on their wedding night, yeah, he uh-huh. took all his clothes off. He had his uh, boxers on. He had a spot on his boxers. Dang, Elijah oh, Wan. No. All that fuss he act. He, he worried about the wrong thing. <laughs> he worried about a dirty nap. Elijah Wan with dirty drawers on national TV. That is crazy. <laughs> But yeah, so anyway, it's good. I can't wait because it come out. It came on yesterday, so I'm always watching on the weekend, so I can have time to like pause it and stuff, you mm. know. But some melanated news. So I wanted to talk about. Did y'all hear about the uh, Detroit woman that tragically passed away on Friday? She had um she jumped in a river to save her cousin's life. Oh yeah, I did hear about that. And I was just like, I, I just wanted to shine because I am just. I don't know. How does that happen? Like, and then she survived. So she supposedly fell in the river. Yep. I don't know how that. They happens. said the person went to stand up and slipped into the water, and then someone jumped into the water to attempt to save her. Somebody else also jumped into the water. That's my cousin's, yeah. That's my cousin's um, niece. And oh. Rest in peace. And I'm praying for you, Didi, and yes. your family. Yes, I did hear about that, and that's just very, very tragic. I think she was very young, and she had a child. Yeah, they but. said 22. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I saw he was posting about it. I feel really bad about that. Oh. It's just like, you know, just even with swimming, like how you really, really need to know, just in case mm-hmm. you never know. Like, mm-hmm. When somebody might throw you in there or when you just might have to get True. in there. Like, I feel like that's just something. Did else. you see that clip on what uh, Charlemagne had posted today about, I forgot who was on the show. And she said that she uh, ended up ending a uh, engagement because her fiance didn't jump in the water after her. She was on a parasailing, uh, you know, thing and it snapped. She couldn't swim. And so she had her life jacket on. So she it snapped. She went into the water. And the boat came back around, but the guy that was on the boat came in after her. And she was upset that her fiancé did not come in the water after her. So she said she didn't talk to him or nothing, and she ended it. Because and, he didn't save her. And they, and they said, they were like, well, did you let him explain? She was like, no, I was appalled. I was upset. And at first I was like, I get it. But then I was like, no, because you don't, like, you don't know the water. You don't know what's going on. You, you know, was he like, oh, come on. Like, I I don't, I would be okay if you just be on there on the boat and waiting for someone else to save me. But if not, if he was just sitting there and not doing nothing, then he is over. Because what? 
I did. You don't care about my I life? I saw that clip, and I because I want to play devil's advocate. Of course. What if he really, like, tightened up? Like, it's a fear. Sometimes yeah. people are really scared. Like, Well, she said he used to be a lifeguard. That's why I don't think he got scared. Well, maybe those big waters, because she said that they was, like, on an island or whatever. Mm-hmm. She, maybe he thought it was some sharks out there. But that is his wife. That don't, his that wife. don't, it was his fiance. I, you're not making it good for him. Yeah. He said, you on your own, sucker. <laughs> you wanna, you wa- it's like you, you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, maybe he just got shook. Like, sometimes, like, you never know how you're going to respond when something happens. You can always say, like, That's oh, true. I would do this, I would do that. But what if he was just like, I don't know what to do. Like, just frozen. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, he knew he couldn't come back from that. So well, obviously, because she that. said it was over and she didn't care. She moved on. She, yeah. She didn't even let him explain. Yeah. And she then, said they locked eyes, too, by the way. Yeah, she said, she oh, said, no. she said, I locked <laughs> eyes with him. <laughs> he was like, you got it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just would have had a conversation. I wouldn't have ended my engagement, but I would have had a conversation. You like, talk about it? like what, what's going on? Like, what, you didn't want to you know, save me? Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, but anyway, and so did y'all hear about Murder Mace? No, what happened with Mace? Murder Mace. Now he was a pastor at once. Now he murdered Mace. He used to be. My husband went to his church too. It was funny. He said he went to that church, and he said he only went once. He was like, I never go back in there. Was Mace talking about up on that pulpit? We don't want to know. We don't want to know. But he said that um, he has taken several shots at uh, Mr. Love or Love or Diddy, whatever himself is called now. I forgot about the Love one. (laughs) And he said, uh, "Love don't steal, my nigga. Change your name." Oh, he the hell with the Love don't steal. Was that like uh, a sermon too? I don't know. Murder Mace, Pastor Murder Mace. He says money was dangling in his face and to keep him around, but the niggas never love to pay the artists, but they love to pay the freaks. Yeah, that's right. Did he do pay? But my thing is, it's like, it's been 97 years. Like at this point, if you ain't got your money, if you ain't took him to court, why are we still talking about it? No, I want to keep talking about it. Get that man his money. I but why like won't he that. take him to court? Because city girls didn't got more money than money. It's make. probably past the statute of whatever. But so why are we talking about it? Yeah, get that man his money. He's probably what money? still trying to stay relevant, maybe. He want his money, probably. He really probably hurting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because the church didn't work out. Yeah, he thought that he's like, I'm gonna have all these churches all over the city. Didn't happen. Dang. Oh no. So, did you guys hear about? uh, Are y'all on TikTok? Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I can dabble in the tick and the top. You do, friend. You do. I have seen you do your little TikTok. <laughs> so did y'all hear about the man, um, Simon Jackson, that uh, ended up going viral because he uh, moved into his office? No. Y'all, where y'all be? So Simon Jackson made a, a video. He went viral. He literally took all of his stuff from his apartment mm-hmm. and moved into a cubicle because, you know, because of covid the office is empty. Everyone's working from home. Well, he was like, his rent too high. So he went here. Mm, that's good. I he definitely did. He went here and uh, he went to go live there. He was living there for like, so they said he was living there since March 8th. So it wasn't that long. But um, it went yeah. viral. Obviously, they found out. And guess what kind of position he was in, y'all? What? He was an engineer. <laughs> Dang, so he had, he had the money he just was saving up? Oh, okay. No, he said they didn't pay him enough. Really? Um, I'm trying to see where he was located, Y'all but they said they didn't, they didn't pay him enough. Um, but yeah, he said uh, that... Maybe he was in New York. Yeah, that's true. Oh, man. But I saw a couple. I thought it was a joke. I thought, because I was reading the comments, and I thought that he owned the company, like, oh, I, I live here. But no, it was real. Like, he had his stuff in, like, his clothes, and he had food. He would u- utilize the kitchen and everything. He was there for all them weeks, and then they ended up firing him. He wasn't oh, hurting nobody, man. They ended up firing him, and um, they, it just, it went crazy on the, on the websites. Uh, but I think... If you don't pay me enough, what are you going to do? Like, because he said he wasn't able. He was like, he literally only had money to pay his rent and stuff. He didn't have money for nothing else. It's a lot of people like that, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the guy on my husband's job that's like that. He, mm-hmm. he go back and clean up in the bathroom before when it, before work. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. He got nice gym shoes. All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> Nice so, I'm not playing with y'all. So, <laughs> also, just wanted to um, I uh, on that topic about. So, I don't know if y'all saw the top ten cities where Black people are doing the best financially. No, 
though. Okay, like so I want you guys to, because it goes into our little topic here too. So we going to move. No, All right. No. So number 10, uh, I will, I'll let you guys guess the top five. So number 10 is Richmond, Virginia. I can see that, you know. Our, our I haven't really. I haven't, oh, Richmond, yeah. Virginia, I pretty nice. Article. Yeah. I remember one of the cities. And then number nine was Miami. Okay. And I can see that. I love yeah. Miami, but I, I was expensive to live there. Shit, are you making money? Okay. Number eight, Houston, Texas. I can see that. They're going to be overpopulated in a minute because everybody moving there. Yeah. And then number seven is San Antonio, Texas. Oh, so Texas just went in. And number six is Charlotte, North Carolina. I can see that too. All right. So number five spot. What do you think? It ain't here. <laughs> Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, of course. The yeah. red states. Okay. Yeah. My um uncle and his wife, they used to live there um uh, for a while. So yeah, and then now they moved to Washington, Seattle. So hmm. which is interesting. I haven't been to visit yet. I just think it's why? There's well, so many white people. Oh, um I think they heard you. I think they did too. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, be more. Who's be more? All what? right. No, you no, because I wanted her to guess. Oh, sorry, yeah. Don't don't be the big cousin you, helping around. Like you, come on, you're supposed to know that. Baltimore, she's about to whisper. Baltimore, to Maryland. Okay, you don't see it. Ain't that where the Braxton's from? Yes. Yep. Um, and isn't that where the where they had that the wire? Mm, yeah, it didn't look like it <laughs> right, went that's in on that show. <laughs> that must have been the wrong part. Right. Number three is a surprise to me, Austin, Texas. No, Texas win. But Austin, Texas? I think the whole Texas just going to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I know someone was like when they had put Houston in the comments, they were like, you mean Dallas? Because they said more of, you know, us are moving to Dallas. But I didn't really particularly like Dallas. It reminded me of here, just bigger. Mm-hmm. To be honest, like it really looks like just a big old Michigan. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's probably why a lot of people from Michigan moved there. Like, hey. Yeah. Number two, one of my favorite cities. Can you guess, friend? Washington. Yeah. yeah. That's what you all, you always talk about, DC. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't want to move there. It's too expensive. Yeah. It really is. I was a uh, um. I was looking at this was when I was single, Ivy, but it was an apartment. 400 or 500 square feet and they wanted $1,500 a month. I said, Lars. They said, you about to move around in this But I know my friend, folks. she moved there. She worked in D.C. and she just lived in Virginia. But ain't nobody got time for all that drive. Yeah, that's, that's where me. that man was living. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why he right. Moving to the job. Right. He was like, let me move into this cubicle. Yeah, and it was funny because I was watching, um, I watched like a couple of his videos. And so one, he moved in his actual cubicle, which is like in the middle of the room or whatever, and um, of the office. And then he was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go over here by the window. I'm going to get me a window. Oh, no, you. he did. <laughs> First of all, the people are looking in like, I think, I think that's what messed him up. Yeah. Because he should have just stayed at his little cubicle. He probably would never got caught. But as soon as he was like, I'm about to get this window, I'm going to set it up. Up he over got here. too greedy. But he got he got oh. fired. And I get a window seat. Okay. And number one, what y'all think? Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Who you think? We not on there. <laughs> We ever will make this, and that's interesting. You don't think so? The, no, they build one of city? the blackest cities. But they say we, we gonna not. Win. We got to, that. We are like they said. It's more other yeah. people. It's a lot of them than people. us. And I was like, really? I can't tell. Because but, we see a lot of us. We yeah. know a lot of us, but it's a lot of them. Yeah, but and, but I said that kind of makes sense because that's why everyone is connected. Like, you be like, oh, you know him? Oh, yeah. you just go with him? Because it's not really that many exactly. of us. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, you could be like, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, because you go up to the UP. You ain't going to see us. Uh-huh. And not only that, y'all remember how they was fighting for um, Trump here. Oh, I Everyone remember. Knows. Oh, I remember. I yeah. actually stopped. Short story. I had a... <sighs> I hope she see it. I had a coworker. She used to call me her white mama. I know it's horrible. Wait a minute. But I you know. let that happen. Because it was, it was just, it was, it was just whatever. But I really don't get that. We're gonna have to unpack that. With <laughs> well, that. okay. But anyway, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyway, I used to work with her. She was like, "Oh, I'm, mean, I'm her mom. I'm just white. I'm her mom. I'm just white." Um, oh, so you went with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing. <laughs> 
we'll talk about it one day. But yeah, so anyway, me and her was super close. Like literally, like during the pandemic, we would go to um George George Park over there in Clinton Township. We would hang out, whatever, because you know everything was closed. Like we had a close relationship. Mm-hmm. But then she asked me about my political views. Mm. She blocked me, y'all. She stopped talking oh, to me because yeah. she was a Trump supporter. Oh, yeah. They didn't play. And I'm like, but you're supposed to be my white mom. Well, that's good that she got out your way because if she was a Trump supporter. that means Yeah, she did scare me one time when the um, when we, the panty started. And we were so we were still working together. And she was like, yeah. I'm getting all my guns together. And she, I was like, guns? What you getting? It's COVID. What you getting the guns for? She's like, I'm getting my guns together. She's like, and I'm getting all this money out the um out the bank. And she was like, and I told my husband to get his money and we're going to put it in the safe. And she's like, and if you want to come and stay with us, you can. I'm not staying with you with all them guns. Because you might turn that gun on me. Because, you know, that sleepover when that one black woman was in the picture and it was all white woman and she didn't come back. From the sleepover. All right. Wait, what? Y'all don't remember that day. <laughs> she talking out. about the purge. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Y'all don't see that online. That that picture is like that last picture, and it's like they all there, and it was all white women. It was one black lady, and for some reason, she just died that night. But oh. nobody knows how because all of the women stuck together. Okay. And just mm-hmm. won't tell what happened. Yeah, well. <sighs> Glad I didn't do that. But number one. Got her up out of there with that political views. And that's good. Yeah. That's good. I, I mean, but it hurt my feelings because I really, I really liked you her. You thought you liked her. Trump supporter says a lot to me. That means that just wait for it. It was coming. That was enough for me. You should have actually brought out your political views earlier so you can get her out the way. <laughs> that's how they show your true colors. You start talking about him around. Well, you, well, the reason why I really liked her because we connected on a spiritual level. That's and good. she uh, she was blow, born blind. Mm-hmm. And her uh, one of her her dad was a minister, and um, they had went overseas or whatever. And this lady prayed over her, and she was able to get her sight back. Oh my goodness! So like, and she was just telling me how she was like in the faith. So that's why we started our friendship, and then we just obviously started talking about other stuff. But yeah, yeah. But anyway, so and- she was born blind. Okay, <laughs> for her to get her eyesight back. <laughs> To support Trump, who is a racist, and you can see that he is a racist. She don't think so. Uh, her, per her Facebook, she he's not a racist. He wanted to make our Amer- America great. I'll take this offline, y'all. All right. Well, number one city, the best financial city for black folks is ATL. Oh, and I can see that. honestly, I wanted to move there. Yeah, but my husband don't people. want to. I'm glad he said no because it's too many I people. I just love seeing us. It was so amazing. Like, I, you should have saw my face. I was so happy I for bet it. you was. She loves I, that's black all people. I, that's all I was talking about. I was like, oh my God, I love, I was like, do you, see? we right here, we right here. We in the store, we in the gas station, we everywhere. Mm-hmm. The neighborhood, we went to go visit his friend, um, she had just bought a house. When to go, her, oh, her neighbor's black. Mm-hmm. And then the last na- the last mayor for Atlanta, she graduated from FAMU. Oh, she was a black woman. A See, grad. listen. Yeah, what like, is what is your connection with FAMU? <laughs> well, you know, I'm an alumni, <laughs> Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, October okay. 3rd, 1887. What? Okay. So what made you go to <laughs> HBCU? So I was at Michigan State and it was great. It's Big Ten University, super phenomenal. And I went to the SA and I just started missing playing my saxophone. Like I started mm. missing the performing arts. Oh, you the cousin that played the saxophone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, I was like, you know, so, <laughs> so oh. I just I was like, hmm. Where do I want to play my saxophone? And I didn't want to play my saxophone at Michigan State. Mm. I didn't want to be the spot. Like, oh, there she go, right there. Like the oh, black the person black person. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be the only black person because you know what happened to that lady. <laughs> <laughs> this the lady she keep bringing up, y'all. Okay. I do not know about this lady. <laughs> I, don't that you're talking about. I don't either. I don't either. But I just, it was just always something about the whole HBCU band. Like, it was just like, okay, go and experience it. If you don't like it, just come back to Michigan State. You like Michigan State, so it's not like you got a bad option, you know? Mm-hmm. So, got down there, didn't know anybody. and So, wait, you moved away from home and went to just FAMU. Yep. Yeah, like, I, I, I applied and I, I kept, first I prayed about it, and it seemed like every car I got behind was like a Florida license plate. I kept seeing oranges mm. everywhere, kept seeing orange and green, 
And I was just like, you know what? I think I'm going to go to FAMU. I, it was like super, super last minute. My dad was getting ready to take my brother back to Georgia. And we were working for him, Charmin Community Center that summer. And he was just like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm taking Mook back. I was like, yeah, I need you to drop me off while you down there. He was like, what do you mean to drop you off? I was like, yeah, I'm going to a school. It's about four hours away from Atlanta. <laughs> so I've been decided. I just need you to uh, drop me off on your way. And he was just like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm moving to Florida. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. A, that's that, crazy. That was and that's thing. faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I definitely went down there completely blind. I The week before I left, I, well, I hadn't made up my mind I was going to go. I was ac- actually at work at Pulaski Park, and I got a call from Dr. White, who was the director of bands, and he was just like, Mrs. Gray, you know, like, I don't know. That's just kind of how I imagine his voice. That's how he, That's how he talks. Like, like, Y'all need these, 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 these voices. Like, yeah, so. <laughs> he you to feel it. And he called me, and he was just like, you know, trying to see what was going on or whatever, and I was just like, you know, hey, Doc, like, I don't have anywhere to live. Like, I haven't heard anything back from the nursing program. Like, I don't know anything. And he was just like, wait one second. And he just called. He was just like, boom, had an apartment for me. Called financial aid, got that straight. Like, literally all in, like, the matter of minutes while I was sitting there at work at Pulaski Park. Wow. He just got everything out there. Like, you have somewhere to live. You got, you know, you already, you have a curriculum. You have classes. All you need is a ride. Yeah, like, I'll see you at band camp. Look at that guy. Pre-drills is what they call it. But I was just like, okay. Now, the crazy part is I hadn't played my saxophone in years. So that you didn't even know. when I got there they were like hey you have to audition for your chair and I'm like oh that part like yeah um, what am I about to play yeah it was crazy but I what's crazy is it kind of like some of the songs like they put in front of me I was like oh I remember playing this in high school so like I remember one of the songs called In Storm of Sunshine and it was it's a march and I just was like playing it and I was just like and I'm just like it just it was crazy. Like, my fingers was moving and my brain was moving. Oh, but my that was eyes the Lord was like, taking over. What is going on? That's like, the Holy Ghost. Stop. Yes. That's the Holy Ghost. Literally. So, yeah, it was crazy because I definitely went down there blind. And I placed and I was just like, and I got on the field. And as it's crazy because I wasn't a freshman, but I was a freshman in the band. You know, so that What do you was mean? A, so at HBCUs. Generally, your first year in a band, different schools call it different things. Like some some schools in the SWAC, they call it crab, like you're a crab. And then uh, they just, I mean, it's pretty much like the people that wear the white T-shirts. and you know. So it was like drama. Kind of. <laughs> They didn't hit it. Everybody that goes to HBCU that's in the band is like, it's not like drum line. Oh, but I mean, I'm sorry. Did see, I we, we felt yeah. like we was there. Right. Because like, drum line is Right, because they to... called them crabs on drum line. Yeah, so we, okay. at FAM, they, we weren't called crabs. Okay. But, I mean, it's basically, that's what mm, it was. You know? Gotcha. So it was just weird for me because it was like, I was supposed to listen to these people that were younger than me, mm. but they felt like they were older than me. And it was just like. That messed with your pride a little bit? It did, because I'm very proud. So it was mm-hmm. just kind of like, okay, you got to humble yourself, you know? Mm. So it was a very humbling experience. And then, like, people just used to just start stuff, you know? And I was from up north. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that already was like, mm-hmm. you got an accent. I'm like, no, y'all got an accent, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it was just weird. It was, it you was. You felt like you was that black dot in MSU in a different so place. You know? I, no, what's crazy is I felt like I was the black person that thought everybody was black. And black people in the South don't identify as black. Uh-huh. Like, tell them, tell them, because it was the same. I went through the same so thing. It was a culture shock for me. Mm-hmm. So they were just like, what are you? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm black. And they're like, you're not Haitian. You look like you're Haitian. And I'm like, what is that? You know, because up here it's just, oh, yeah. you're black. But yeah. there it's like, no, I'm Bahamian. I'm Jamaican. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, like. Oh, Dominican. Wow. All of this different stuff. And it was just like. I would have to just pull out my ancestry DNA and just carry it around. <laughs> Oh. Like no, you're definitely you're definitely something. Like you you and I'm like Yeah, they will convince you. Really? Like I They am? will convince you. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. Mm. But then like they were like, Yeah, that girl over there, she got a she got an attitude. She from she from Miami. I'm like, I'm not from Miami. I'm from Detroit. <laughs> so they're like, Oh, she from Detroit, y'all. You know, so it was kinda like, it's like y'all you just were picking with me. Yeah. Like mm. so but I held my own, so. As you should. They do, though. I told you I cried when I went to McDonald's and they were speaking Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get no I was like, I just want a big man. And she was speaking Spanish. I was like, 
like, this is not for me. So, I need to go was back this home. experience in Florida too for you? Yeah, when I was in Miami. Okay, so that takes us into our topic then. Yeah, well, not really because I was older when I went there, but I feel you. Mm-hmm. But you yeah. did go, you did move there, right? Yeah, when I was younger. That's a big deal for me. Yeah. I've never be- moved out of Michigan. Okay. So, for both of y'all to just take that leap of faith and move out the state. I'm the wild so child. I'm OC so. gang gang. So I just you just left because you're the only child. I, I, no, I I mean I'm the only child. I don't have no, like I'd be like I don't have no ties here. So I I'll just leave. You mm-hmm. know and that's why I did Free it. Free spirit. Yeah. But our topic, you know what? I already named it. I might change it, but I called it. It's a hard knock life. Oh, you like that? I like that. You like that? I like, I like that. my friend. Like my sis. <laughs> <laughs> So we are going to talk about the age to leave home or, you know, and then just the trials and tribulations and things you learn during, you know, going home. So I have my first question is, what age did you leave home? 18. So it was like a few days before my 18th birthday. Okay. Michigan Michigan State started school early. So, I mean... It was like 18, pretty much. 17 okay. And you were 17. 95%. And then, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I was, I was 18 as well. Really? When I left home. I had a poll today, guys. And okay. I asked everybody, I said, do you think that 18 is too young to move away from home? And I think that pe- a lot of the people were answering based on the time now. So a lot of people was like, yes, it's too young mm. right now. A lot of people need to get financially de- um, independent. Mm-hmm. Um, they, a lot of people said 21 is a good age for them to move away from home. And I think it's because now it just seems a little harder. It seems like you need more to be okay to be out there by yourself. And people are a lot more sensitive now, I Mm -hmm. think, especially since the pandemic. I feel like suicide rates have gone up. Mm. Like, I feel like people just aren't as secure as, like, or as independent. I don't know. maybe, And that's maybe just some of the things that I'm seeing. But I feel like younger people are more sensitive now and, like, Mental health is like huge. So I they mean, yeah. be around people at home. Yeah. They need to stay with their parents a little mm. longer. Huh, okay. I get that. All right. Would would you? Do you think you'll still leave at that same age? I feel like if no, I wouldn't. You would not. I would stay a little longer. And Why? Milk, milk my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I would have stayed uh, until. That? First of all, I would have stayed till I was like oh at least God. twenty. Really? I would have milked my dad. Yeah, definitely. Like He had to kick me off the phone bill at 25. Oh, my God. Why would you milk him, though, friend? Just because? Or was it? He always made sure gas was in my car. Oh, I could literally just wake up. (laughs) Like, I would sleep till 12 (laughs) noon. Breakfast would be waiting on the stove for me. Like... If I was short money, it's like, mm. hey, you got it. So it was a good situation going on. I wouldn't have never left. That would have dragged me out the house. Oh, my God. What about you? But <laughs> I still, I, I yeah. still would have left. I wanted, I wanted independence. To, you wanted, yeah, know your I own. wanted independence. I wanted yeah. to get out and get it. And hindsight, I probably shouldn't have. I probably would have had a lot less student loan debt. But that that part, that's what I'm saying. The financial part. If I could have just milked them a little longer. So you saying 25 would have been the age? No. Okay. <laughs> You know, that's, you What's know. What's the age then, friend? At I, what point would they have kicked you out, though? My mom would have kicked me out at 18 when I was kicked <laughs> out. That's, that's exactly what, I, what happened, you know? That's why I was out at 18. Oh, so you got booted. I didn't get booted. You but didn't I was leave. Like, this you didn't leave on your own. I did leave on my own. Okay. But it wasn't the, it wasn't okay. the situation that I wanted to stay. Got either. you. But if I could have, if I could have stayed longer, I would have probably stayed at 21, 22. That would have been a good time frame. Okay. I would have I would have been because my head was I wanted money too, so I would mm-hmm. get everything, stacked my money, and made a nice situation where I felt like at eighteen I felt like hey if you get out here you gotta make sure you figure it out and you stay out there and you get everything together so you don't have to go back home and that pressure made it where you didn't have the comfort of saving as much as you could have if you had the comfort of being at home. And some people look at that like, oh, you know, you're a failure, like you're staying at home. Me, I look like you are preparing yourself so when you get out there, you good on your own, period, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I always say that with my kids too. Like if they ever wanted to come back to live with me, I wouldn't be the parent like, "Uh uh-uh, you got to get on your own. I want them to set them up so they're comfortable to leave. when. Okay. They're ready. So, yeah, okay. 22, 21. Got to be careful with that. Cause okay. They don't want to get out. <laughs> well, that goes into my next question in regards to, because you didn't say financially. So, what are some essential skills you think you need before you leave the nest? You go first. 
I would say the stuff they don't teach you in school. Okay. You know, like budgeting. Mm-hmm. And learning how to pay bills. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I learned about at an HBCU. Okay. Like, keeping your paperwork. You know, like, love our HBCUs, but you learn so much because you go through a lot. You know, whereas Mm -hmm. Michigan State, everything was just like, boom, boom, boom. It was by the book. It was super organized. And at FAMU, I had to learn to be responsible. Like, oh, if you lose this, you might might be messed (laughs) up. You know, so I would think just learn how to be responsible. Okay. Like, the just the little stuff. Okay. Hmm. Like, here. Here is $15. You got $100 $100 that you got to pay for this and you got this for that. What's the priority? You know? You mm-hmm. don't think that you would have um, learned that if you stayed here more than you would have quick, as quick as you did at HBCU? Oh, no. Definitely not. It, definitely, definitely learned a lot through the struggle, the HBCU struggle. But I can say I formed some friendships that I mm-hmm. I know are never going anywhere because we were in it together. Y'all were struggling like, together. Yeah, look, it's wow. Thanksgiving. You... You have the corn. <laughs> I have the Salisbury steak. Like, you right. know, just, come on, Salisbury steak. <laughs> <laughs> like Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, we we ate good. We ate okay. good. I'm exaggerating, but I'm just saying, like, you just you just build these bonds that are mm-hmm. just crazy. Like when I think about like me having a baby shower in the future. And I know my Florida friends are going to be there. Wow, mm-hmm. that's like, awesome to have friends forever. You know, yeah. you know, you move back, you know, they're going to still travel to come for you. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I love that. So you gonna you you worry about my question, right? Me, your Let me answer. Get the question again. <laughs> <laughs> what are some essential skills you think you need before you leave the nest? Maturity. You got to be mature. Okay. I think that. And you have to have a little a little drive and ambition so you don't get complacent. Um, also, I feel like organization is good. You know, just even when you were talking about the bill paying and stuff like that, that it, sh- paying them down bills going to hold you accountable because mm-hmm. if you don't, your stuff is off. Then you start feeling the world. Oh, my lights is off. <laughs> that happened Uh-oh, to me. Oh, my <laughs> Oh, uh, my groceries, like, it's looking a little, little noodle-ish in here. Like, uh-oh, what's going to be rent yeah. or food, you know? Yeah. So um, even just going to work, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, I can do a part-time job, just hang out at the house and maybe uh, buy some new shoes with this money. No, like, you need to work to to eat. You need to work. Mm-hmm. To, so um, just the maturity, like, if you're not mature, don't go out there and, and play around in the streets. Just stay home. Okay. Okay. Um, all of that, uh, but I think one of the main essentials for me <laughs> was being organized. Oh, okay. Because, like I said, my lights was off one day. So my mom, you know, I'm OC gang gang, and she, she kept me organized, and even when I left, she still kept me organized, but I think maybe she just fell off, forgot, came home. Wait a minute, the lights off? I called mom, something's wrong, my lights off. She's like, Tiffany, did you pay the bill? She knew automatically. Well, huh? yeah, no, I thought you were going to, okay. So that, and mind you, I was like 20. So it was like, oh, shoot, like I got to remember to do this stuff. So that's why now I keep everything in my phone. Like my calendar on my phone is my planner, and I keep everything at like what's due, what everything, you are and really I have a good with that. yeah, I am that I've been doing that since then because I I forget, and so you have to you know yeah. that's my that's how I remind myself. Yeah, like you get your planner together a whole month in advance. It's like hey, I do. Planner, um, I literally hang out on this day. I literally have ahead. things planned up until July first. So I have things. Yeah, you're really good. I mean, I think you <laughs> taught me that. You taught me time management. Like yeah. I'm still late. Um, but you're doing so good, friend. I, I meant I'm to trying. tell you that you are doing up. This podcast has made her get on it, baby. Like for real. That makes so, me feel really no, good. No, I've been meaning to tell you that. I didn't want because you know how sometimes you tell people good stuff and then they start slacking again. Right. So uh, I didn't want to tell her. Probably should have kept that. To I probably should have. I'm, I'm serious. About this. <laughs> okay, now, now we're talking about women mm-hmm. and the ages they're leaving home. What do you think, like? Is a good age for young men to leave I don't and be think on their my own. Husband, if it was up to my mother in law, I don't think my husband would have ever left home. You think he'd still be there? I think my mother in law <laughs> wanted him to be there. <laughs> he'd still forever. be there. He, like, she, like, I feel like she wanted him to stay. Mm. It wasn't him. It was like my mother in law literally told me, um, like, oh, you, you gonna move and get your own place? 
Kenny would probably just still be here. <laughs> <laughs> so that was her way of telling me, you ain't taking my son, mm. you know? And it's like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. And then when he, it was like, oh, he's not. And then when he started, like, growing up, it was like, I saw a different side of her. I think she wanted him to need her. Mm, yeah, some parents are like that. My mom is like that. Really? Yeah, I think yeah. it's all only child thing. She definitely honestly. made it. Yeah. She made it where it's like, hey, come back. You know, yeah. like, I, I can do it for you. And exactly. Still, yeah, my still, mom is the same way. She still ease her way in there to show like, hey, let me do something. So it's so funny. It's the opposite with my husband. Well, his his dad was like, no, you out at 18. But it was kind of like not, he wasn't out, out, but he was. He was out their house, but he ended up moving in his own place, which was his grandma's house. So it was his own, it was a two family flat. So she, he, okay. he paid rent, but it still was like, you're still with your family. And then um, he had rules there so he can have females after a certain time. So he was like, hey, this is stupid. But he ended up just going to Clark and was like, forget it, forget y'all. I just left. Just to get away. Just to get away so he can have his real independence. But yeah, he had to get out 18. It's like, you know, grown people gonna leave and live in my house. But I don't know. I had a back and forth with my cousin. Um, she has all boys. She has three boys. And she feels like something you guys talk, talk, t- touched on was that you want to be prepared so you don't have to come back. So that's what she feels like she's doing with her boys, which they're men. They're in their 20s. But she was like, I don't want them to be out there and then have to come back home. All I'm the teaching them how to the do world. Yeah. It gets to men. Yeah. Um, I think the men, they feel a little harder than us. It's like us. It's like. I want to do this. I want this. I want mm-hmm. this for myself. But for men, it's like if something don't go right, it's kind of like you can you can see it affects them mm-hmm. differently. Like they mental and emotional. It's kind of like okay, calm down. Like it's me. It's like okay, bad stuff happens. Like on to the next thing. I got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Them is like the fuck. Uh, uh, you know what is going right. on? Like it's a lot. yeah. So what is the max? Like what is the cap for the age? You think? Poof. You got to be out at thirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You I, I mean, even in this world, because I agree, it, these different, these children and young adults are way more sensitive and it's different. Like, it's just a different world that they're living in. But I still, I feel like you should be out on your own by 21. And I also will touch on this. I reason why I left home was because I felt, my mom didn't care. She wanted me to stay there. I mean, if I, she, she would still want me to be there right now. But I felt like I'm doing adult things, being sexually active, going out, partying, whatever. I'm not trying to do that in your house. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I, it, I'm I'm being grown. I need to be grown out there. And the, I made the decision to leave. I didn't get kicked out. Of nothing. I was just like, no, this is, I'm being an adult. Let me go be an adult. And so that, and it was more so out of respect for her because, I mean, I want to be out here getting my thing out. So, you know. Not your thing out. My thing. My thing. <laughs> I, yeah, I would, I would say between, like, I, I was thinking 21 in mm-hmm. my mind, but then I was like, well, technically, they don't kick you off your insurance, your parents' insurance until you like... 24, well, right? I think... I don't know if it's... Or yeah, 25. I had both of my kids on my mom and daddy's insurance, and I was 24 after I had Ari, and then it was like, I think I got the boot at 25. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I would think by then... Well, you like, just you milked it, huh, friend? I milked them. They she say that. They talk about that all the time. Like, she got both the babies on the insurance. You know, I added the kids? It was no... like I no. Am so, you know, what scarred me was, like, one of our cousins, she had her baby early, Ruri, and she was like, oh, my God, like, I'm getting these bills in the mail. Like, you know, it was a $10,000 bill, and she had to put it on, you know, the insurance. So I'm like, oh, no, I can't have a baby and be owing these folks. So then when I had, I'm like, no, like, is it a way? And my dad's like, you know, well, let me see. He's like, oh, you still on my insurance. So we had to run That's all of the true. insurances, and I paid nothing them kids i yeah. was happy about it that's beautiful <laughs> i was happy this about it it's a milker yeah, i am and i tell you that phone bill he had to oh i was mad about it he and kicked, that's that's he funny me off on my 25th birthday guys that's funny because oh, my God. my sister-in-law my she birthday? is she's still on her parents uh yeah i'm calling you out leah she's still on her parents uh phone bill i'm proud of you leah and Kevin was too, actually. Yes. Like, um, and so he decided, he was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I, I don't want to no more. So he ended up finally. But this is literally recently. He just got his own, like, bill, like, maybe, like, three years ago. 
Oh, my daddy tried to have several sit downs with me leading up to that 25th birthday, and I was not. So, did you ignore pivot? Yes, I pivoted every time. He like, I know he was like, she just keep on getting me. Like, he wanted to leave that conversation like the intention was to get her off, but she got me again, and I got another phone out of it. I was like, you know, okay. you want to? I was like, where uh, you getting phones? So you're like, charging? Yeah. Get off my phone bill. <laughs> Ooh, what my- else you got, friend? Okay, guys. For questions? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, do you got your cards, too? You want to do oh, those? I do have. You got to set them up, friend. You're right, because I wanted to do something different. She right? wanted to do a list, so we, you know, we're going to try it out on you. Right. <laughs> I like that. This yeah, is what I'm going to, I'm caught. I'm calling this game the Thank, Thank Us Eight. Thank Us Eight. And the reason why I'm calling it that is because I have eight cards that I am going to um, go through. <laughs> and you have to answer them. In eight you seconds. And yeah. Not eight seconds. What but they're eight cards. Eight seconds? Oh, just very quick. It's got to be very quick, you know. What's quick? Eight seconds. It just helps me gauge who you are. Okay. All right. Well, I'm getting you, you said eight, eight seconds. Because seconds, these are long questions. Like, I mean, so you can't really like. <clears throat> okay, friend. We can do it your way. Okay. So you're going to do eight? eight Where's the eight comes in at? I just want to know what eight comes The eight and later. Just stick. Just roll with it, friend. <laughs> hey, <laughs> friend got to challenge me. Okay. Which rapper would you bring back? Tupac. Okay. Best female R&B group of the 90s. That's no, wait, no. pause. I want to know why you want to bring back Tupac. Uh, I feel like you have a lot to say right now. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, he, he had good music as far as things to talk about. And I feel like with everything that's going on now, with, mm-hmm. you know, especially like every all the uh, black people yeah. and the necks and, the you know, just, right. I feel like he would have some powerful music. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's cool. a good one. I like that. Best R&B um, female group in the 90s. Uh, of the 90s. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the 90s. TLC? Yeah, oh yeah, that was a good one. Mm-hmm. That was a really good one. Sure. So you're going to pick TLC over like a SWV Escape? Uh, These faces you make right now. You like, I don't know, you got me. I don't know, because this, I, like the 90s, I like that's that's like it for me. Like when it comes to music, like I can just listen, I still listen to the 90s. Like, I do too. Like it's regular music all day. Now, mm-hmm. You know, just so bumping it like this, the newest period. Thing. TLC was my first CD, so that's why I went you to gotta TLC. Stay with okay, you. which one? Uh, what's the one with the monkey on your back? Uh, what about your friends? Okay. Oh, the, so they first one. What yeah. is that the first one? That okay. Was, that was my. I like crazy, sexy, cool. Mm. That's my favorite one. For you, um, before you parallel park, what do you do? I look in the mirror. You look in the mirror? <laughs> For me, I turn down my radio. Like do that. you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. always been like this since I got out of driver's training. I don't parallel park. What the, What do you do? Do you just... <laughs> Drive around? Should find another yep. place. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, we just had this conversation in the car. I, I shouldn't have my license. You shouldn't. You should not. Okay, so what TV dad um, do you, would you say is your favorite? Jack. Jack. Who is Jack? Jack from This Is Us. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm going to always say Bill Cosby, and I don't care if y'all judge me. She love her son William. Who are you going to say? TV dad, TV dad. Um, Frank. Frank, who's Frank? From Alicia. <laughs> 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 Frank was not doing nothing. Who was Frank doing, doing nothing but catching her going out the window? Frank right. didn't do nothing. Alicia. <laughs> that she dug that one out of nowhere. I'm like, hey, y'all like that, didn't you? That was pretty good. How long is a Baptist um, church service? Would you guys say? Two hours. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll give you two hours. It depends on what church you're going to. Okay, and what brand velour sweatsuit was your was your favorite in two thousand? What brand? <laughs> I think I was wearing a uh, uh, basic brand. <laughs> Lord, as long as it, I don't, I don't even know what it was. was. Uh, mine was BCBG. BCBG. You remember BCBG? 
I feel like I had a K Swiss one, but I made okay. that up. No, maybe it was Adidas. She I don't know. Said I don't know. Like, I, in 2003, we did our senior pictures, and I made everybody wear a velour outfits. I do remember. I do remember. All of us pictures. wore velours. Aww. Like it was just the hottest stuff out there. <laughs> All right. So if you could pick anything from the 2000s, what would you bring back? <sighs> Man, um, jobs. Mm. I feel like everything is online, and I feel like it's getting out of control. Mm. Mm. Like I love the convenience of you know Amazon, but I feel like it's getting to the point where it's just like nobody's gonna have a job and mm. can't do anything. Just be at home. Like we robotic. used to talk to each other. Now everybody is just kind of like on the internet. Like. I was looking at me and Nick in the bed, and I'm like, we both sitting here on our phones. Like, who is Nick? Nick, oh, that's my hubby. That's my. You husband. ain't mentioned your husband this whole interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better show them how she. She's up with her friends from Florida, that's, Nick. <laughs> that's my husband. That's my husband. Hey, just man, we. I was just in the bed with his name is yeah, Nick. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, no, we gonna put our phones down, <laughs> and then we gonna watch TV, which. <laughs> Still, you know, whatever. Because just even if you think about it, like back when you have minutes after nine and stuff, we didn't mm-hmm. or we didn't text as much or we didn't wasn't didn't have an internet on our phone. You usually had your phone to just answer the phone and then you'd be mm-hmm. done. You weren't on your phone all the time. We didn't. I feel like we didn't text back then because it used to cost. Yeah, it was ten cents. But maybe mm-hmm. maybe that was a good thing. I was. I we was feel, outside. Feel like yeah, that, we, I was just having this conversation. We was outside. We used to ride our bikes. Mm-hmm. It was a whole situation. We didn't, mm-hmm. you know. Even when we got older, we was outside. You like after high school, so yeah. We had to find things. To yeah. Do. Like oh, what are we doing this weekend? Oh, we're actually doing something. We're just yeah like, scrolling for five hours. Then the whole day is gone, and it's nighttime. Yeah. Last one, guys. Who is your favorite Jackson? I'm gonna have to go with Michael. What man? I'm picking Janet. Um, I'm picking neither. I'm picking um. You want Latoya? N- ew, no, the older brother, Jermaine. Jermaine. She don't no, even know which not one. Jermaine. Hold on, <laughs> Bobby. I don't know. Not Bobby, ain't no Bobby. It's it's no. No. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. It is because he fine, y'all. You said Bobby. Um, did I make that name up? I don't think you did. It's a Freddy. Jackie. Jackie. Mm. I'm going to have to look him up. Ja- I'm gonna show I don't know. I'm about to I show think you threw him in the family. No, I did not. He was the oldest. Jackie, see? Well, he look. He don't look nice now, you know. Sure, they ain't Jackie Robinson you talking about. All right. Y'all need to know the Jacksons. Ah. Where Jackie at? All right. right so, okay. So, hmm. Tell us some more about you, Tracy. What was, um, what you got going on? So right now, outside of just trying to find people that want to sell their homes because there's not enough inventory out there, I am getting prepared for my little baby. This is a- amazing! I'm Congratulations! So excited! Thank you so much. I have a little baby on the way, and he is due August sixth. Yes. Okay. Super, super excited. So, oh, goodness. We got another Leo coming. We do have another Leo coming. Yes. My family is irritated with me because August is always crazy. So, Oh, wow. But, yeah. And you're like, she's like really over the top, too. So, it's like, this is the wedding that I was in. And, um, and she <laughs> took over. talking about me she on your took, podcast. She so. took over my whole <laughs> year, y'all. First of all, she go, she's, she group makes a hundred group texts. No, just one. She just, one. oh, yeah, it's the same people. I'm just going to start a new group text. Okay? Oh. She wanted them. I started oh. to do that today just to irritate you. Like, hey, bridesmaids, haven't heard from you guys. I'm like, ah. the podcast episode is canceled, <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> I don't know if I had enough of you today. I didn't. I didn't do it. But So what are you going to name the baby? Do you want to share? Yes. So his name is going to be Ashton. Mm-hmm. Oh. So my husband's middle name is Ashton. So we are flipping his name around. So it's going to be Ashton Nicholas Posey because he doesn't want to have a Nick Jr. or a Nickelodeon kid. I don't know. Nickelodeon. I'm like, do people still even watch Nickelodeon? It is. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. They do. And yeah, when your do. son gets here, he probably is going to watch Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So he doesn't want him to have that. This name. your first child? This is my first child. Are you excited? How do you feel about that? I'm super excited. I'm super excited. So we actually are having a baby and we have a surrogate. 
Okay. So my cousin is carrying my baby and I talked to her the other day and she was just like, yeah, I just keep waking up at three o'clock in the morning and going back to sleep at six. And it's so crazy because lately I have been doing the exact same thing. Oh, wow. So you and the baby on the same sleeping schedule I was just already. Like, and I've never been like, I've always been a night owl. So it's like for me to wake up at three when I used to go to sleep, mm-hmm. you know, later, it's just kind of weird. And it's like. Oh my God, are we connected? Yes, like, you are connected. That's whoa. crazy. So it's it's crazy. She's, are you are you gonna kick Ashton out of eighteen? I'm not. That's what I wanted to get. I was waiting on I'm that. Not, I'm not. But I mean, <laughs> hey, by the time you are off the insurance, buddy, you have to have it figured out. So what about Nick? You think Nick? I'm like, boy, you better get up out of here. Oh yes, he will definitely. He, Kick him out. He, he, I, he's he's that dad, mm. you know, like like he's premeditating discipline already, and I'm like oh, he ain't even did oh, nothing. No. So he hasn't not even done baby. anything. He's like I'm not playing that. <laughs> I'm not dealing he with this. Be bad. That. Like, <laughs> sir, can he get here first before? I don't know why guys are like that with the boys. Like uh, Kenny is like the girls. They did nothing. Then when we had KJ, KJ is young. KJ is very curious. Like Kenny's mm-hmm. like he's bad. And I'm like, he is not bad, but KJ is very curious. Like, he will go and... That's a nice way of putting he's it. He's very sneaky. Okay. okay. I'm going to be I was real. Gonna say, My baby okay. is so <laughs> sneaky. I have to watch him. He will go and say, I'm like, oh, yeah, K- KJ, follow me to the kitchen. Before I make it around the corner, he's already up the stairs, like, upstairs through all the rooms. So it's like, oh, shoot. Before she come, I got to hurry for making up these stairs. And he's moving <laughs> fast. And if you oh, see KJ, wow. he's, like, literally, un- like, this tall. Mm-hmm. And he's he's a little short guy, but he mo- he makes his way around that house. <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, buddy. surrogacy. That is something I'm so happy you came on here to even just mention that because we haven't had that. I said that I wanted to get people on here to talk about different things like postpartum eventually, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. But surrogacy, like, how is that process for you? It is very, very, very interesting, especially in the state of Michigan. So in Michigan, it's illegal to pay a surrogate to carry a child. It's illegal? Illegal. Oh, wow. So the state of Michigan has determined that if you pay a surrogate, they're doing it for unethical reasons. So it's very difficult for a lot of people that can't carry or have fertility issues because if they don't have somebody that's willing to do it, they're stuck or wow. they have to go to another state or they have to go to Ohio, Canada, New York, wherever. Just to start a family. Just to start a family. Mm, and it's just rules. like something that people feel everybody should have access to. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They have so many restrictions. So even now, we're actually going through the surrogacy attorney process because in order for us to sign the birth certificate at delivery, we have to do like a whole custodial, like a whole custody battle up front. And like they have to serve my wow. surrogate papers. I just thought that was like the craziest thing. I'm like, but she's already agreeing to give the baby. So right. They got to make sure they go through the process. But they have to go through the process. So they, but that process isn't free. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, okay, so it's unethical it's to pay somebody. It's all a business here. It's mm-hmm. a way to control but women's bodies. It's, yeah. it's ethical for you to charge for right. me to file this paperwork to say, hey, I can sign this paperwork mm. at the time that the baby is born. So that has just been a whole thing. That's I mean, good to know. That's good information out there because I know it's a lot of women out here that, you know, you don't have anybody speak on things like this. You yeah. Know? Or just even tell you, like, what to prepare for. Were you prepared for, sur- like, surrogacy? Did anybody, do you know anybody that kind of was like, hey, watch out for no. this? No. You just kind of went in blind. I definitely went in blind, but I joined, um, it was a group on Facebook. It was like a IVF, like, Michigan Fertility, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's a lot of group. It's a group for everything. It is. Oh, it is. It's, it's it is. crazy. I saw a group for people that dated Leos and, like, were. Uh-huh. I'm like, what? The you support, know, yeah, I was, I, was support group. I was part of the support group for Aries. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, sir. <laughs> I heard that they pretty I, I bad. Needed, I, needed, I needed help. Like, I'm not I'm lying. Sure like, I need it. Then. Yeah, of course it is. I was in that one too. I dated really? one. Oh, that was why I went to Florida. But move on. Uh-huh. Go on. <laughs> so I joined that group, and it was support. It was it was very beneficial. But mm-hmm. surrogacy is not common here, so it was just kind of like mm. uncharted waters. So a lot, I had a lot more people reaching out to me saying, "How did you do this? How did you go about that? Like, what did you do?" Because nobody talks about it. Like it's so hush hush. And it's what's crazy is I would have people like me and my husband. We did a whole interview on like our fertility journey because we both had issues Mm -hmm. and 
it was crazy. People wouldn't like the post, but they would send me messages. Oh, you know? they're private about yeah, it. Yeah, they don't want anybody no. to know they're going through the same thing or, hey, we've been trying for a long time. We don't know what's going on. So they'll send me messages. They'll call mm-hmm. me and ask me things, but they won't hit like. <laughs> and, and the reason why, it's really, really common. And I wish that more women spoke out on it because I don't know if it's just like our our generation or what, but it is a ton of women that have fertility issues. Mm-hmm. Like, I know so many women, and it's like you, you're battling, you feel like you're alone. Mm-hmm. But if we all can come together and actually speak on it, you feel like, oh, I can handle this. Or I can learn from you, and I know that mm-hmm. I got hope, you know? Yeah. Like, even just hearing the surrogacy thing, that's why I want to know if anybody told you before because... Nope. So we went through IVF. Um, so the re- the reason we, we started IVF was because of like low count, low mobility, motility, all this other stuff. So the doctor, one of the doctors or OBs I went to see, he was just like, there's no way you're getting pregnant. Like you have to go through IVF. Oh, wow. Don't try IUI. Don't try this. Don't try that. Like you have to do IVF. So we did IVF. We... Came back with some healthy embryos. Last, well, no, December 2020, they put two boy embryos in me. And my IVF doctor had mentioned, like, oh, you have fibroids, but they're not in the way of anything, you know, right. like reproductively, like you'll be fine. And they didn't take. And he was just like, well, that didn't work. You should just get a surrogate. And I was just kind of like. That's it? The bedside like, manner is I'm horrible. Like, he, I mean, he didn't say it like that, yeah. but he, he was very right. direct. Like, he, he was straight to the point, like. You know, it's already taken a lot for us to get a healthy embryo. Mm-hmm. So the next time you get some healthy embryos, you shouldn't waste them. Gotcha. So from there, it was just like, okay, so now what do I do? Mm-hmm. You know, and then I was blessed. I had a couple of people say, you know, I would do it. That was a real blessing. Like, it's a selfless act for somebody to Definitely. even just, like, okay, I will carry, you know, this baby for you. I know for me, it was traumatic my last pregnancy. Like, I... Mm-hmm. Every other pregnancy was like, oh, yes, this is cool. I mean, you know, we're going to get in here. I'm, I will used to tell y'all, remember, I'm going to go pick up my baby. I used to tell them the day I go in, like, hey, let me I go pick up my baby. I thought going to deliver it. She's, she's, she's <laughs> buying equipment at home. Like, I'm going to deliver this baby during the pandemic I by myself. That. But then I had um, what they call, what, hemorrhaging after I had KJ. And I lost mm. a ton of blood. I was um, had blood clots. Mm. And um, I was shaking. I was freezing they literally had to go inside me and pull the blood clots out to mm. save me mm. it was either you go to the surgery which is like that could take time and i didn't want to get back on that table so she literally stuck her hand and when i say like my husband was in the room and he said like her elbow was all the way up there to get the blood clots out but i just remember a cold chill i remember me getting yeah. very weak and all of that that process like people don't realize like you giving birth is it's not just you going to go pick up your baby. Right. Like, it's something that is a chance that you can go in there and it might not happen the way you expect it to happen. Mm-hmm. So I don't think anybody should take that for granted. You know, yeah. like babies are blessings. And yeah. I, I'm I'm happy that you even found a surrogate because that's a selfless act. You know, yeah. I'm, I, it scarred me. I'm, I said, no, I get my tubes tied. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. immediately. It definitely, definitely is. Mm-hmm. So, um. I just I, I there's no way to thank somebody for doing something. Your like journey that. Like is it's, very inspiring. Too. It's it's crazy for us to be like here, you know. Mm-hmm. And then like like I tease I tease my baby mama all the time. Like I'm like <laughs> I, I'm like I I have to start irritating you because I'm not a good. I was like I'm not a good baby daddy if I don't irritate you. She was like, no, it's not necessary. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I feel like this baby is going to be just like you. Like, I feel like the baby is going to be very, very connected to you. And it's going to be a little Tracy. Like, I just feel like it's going to be driven. It's going to be strong. First of all, it's a Leo. So we already know where we're going with that. Yeah. But I feel like he's going to be a real mama's <laughs> boy. This is the golden child right here. Just mm-hmm. after everything you guys been through, like this baby coming, we're going to tell him like, hey, you better not break no bone. You don't understand what your mama and daddy did for you to even get here, you know? It's yeah. definitely been a, a, a sacrifice. And it's crazy because, you know, I hear – and I think for me, I think that's one of the things that people are insensitive to because – they don't understand what you're going through. Mm-hmm. So, like... Say anything. One, yeah, they say all kind of stuff. Like, don't have no kids. Like, that used to be so irritating to me to hear people mm-hmm. say that. I hate to like, hear that anyway. Like, do you hate your kids? Yeah. Like, you know, like, why are you saying that? And then it's just kind of like... Some of them do. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. No, that's a real story. I feel like his, to me, it was like a blessing to see, oh, yeah, it's a mixture of me and you. And right, I love because you so you, much. Cause you're in love with that person. Yeah, and but their But when some people don't have that, so they don't. Or, um, or people that already have children are just like, why don't you just adopt? I wouldn't be paying all that money. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. And it's just like, but you have your own children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you don't understand. Yeah, you can't sleep you know? on mm-hmm. something. You like, you have understand. somebody that looks just like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So people just kind of say whatever comes mm-hmm. to their mind and it's just like when somebody's going through that you have to be sensitive to it so mm-hmm. I think that's something I wish people kind of were more understanding of but and I like, feel like sometimes you got to tell people that I think that a lot of times we too quiet you know sometimes you got to speak up and say you know well why did you say that um, even with adoption you saying why don't you why don't you just adopt how about when people say like oh don't adopt you know you know that's not your child that offends people that I got adopted because mm-hmm. you know like wait what do you mean I was adopted you know mm-hmm. nobody did that for me mm-hmm. why, you know then right. what would happen so you just got to be mindful of everything you say yeah yeah you never know what to trigger somebody yeah Yes, yes, yes. Well, I can't wait for little Ashton to come here. Tell him he got to come back and get him some headphones. And, <laughs> and so I'm like, are you happy to be here, Ashton? Yes. yes. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, did you have any other things for us, friend? I don't. I have a thing. You know, I have my um. Okay. Well, you know, every guest that we've had, you're our third guest. I love it. Oh. So what we do is we sing Oh God! Yeah, we sing her so intro. I hope you got your vocals ready. So get those vocals together. Everyone has to do it. it it's standard. Like it's mandatory. Mm-hmm. This is this is hilarious. This so. is like my favorite part of the y'all show. It's, so you already know the lyrics. I don't even got to tell you the lyrics. Horrible. I don't even got to tell you know that. <laughs> you know what? The people was chewing us up in live <laughs> yesterday. They said y'all need some thing. more practice. And, and shout out to the people that was alive yesterday. Yes. We had a great time. We did. Time. They coming in. Because we usually in. have 30, 30 minutes, but we was on there for an hour. Okay. Listen, we was getting it. And you know, but friend, people, I need you to get it together, though. I need you to make sure you can see the comments. About having somebody sing this part for you? No, no, we got this, it. The, no, we we got it. Oh, okay. I feel like we got a lot of good harmony. Here. All right, now oh, okay. they didn't All appreciate right. it. The way they came in with the comments yesterday was crazy it's to me. It's called jealousy. It is. I understand. <clears throat> so, on the count of three, we are all going to do it together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> get, get ready, Tracy. <clears throat> Okay. If you want to add right, anything right. extra, you know. And you always can. jazz it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you want to rap it, you do, know you should have bought your saxophone for my Ooh. intro. Yeah. <gasps> for real, why you didn't tell her to bring the sax? Turn it. Oh, because I, listen, I've been waiting to hear. Because you know, I talked about you in one of my you other think ones. She did? Yes, I think uh, I talked about Tracy quite a few times on Yeah, it, on, but, on but when episode. you talk about that saxophone, I was like, I oh my God, you was like, she really know how to play the saxophone. Because I was telling them how um, I had a clarinet, but I really didn't take it serious <laughs> compared to my cousin who had a saxophone that was like this is her passion and like girl stop playing with that little toy you know for me and my clarinet all right so one two three touched by an angel i did not hear you tracy touch 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 <laughs> yes. what you got for us friends okay guys today in every idea I'm sorry, today, every, in every day, every idea that you create will be creative, thoughtful, and full of potential. Mm. This is your message to do whatever you're about to create, you know? Do it. Because I saw them two rainbows. Oh, okay. yes. So, it, yeah. That goes it. along with that. I love that. It sure does, right? Yes. Yes. Don't hmm. be scared. Don't, Don't be, be scared. scared. That is it, y'all, because. I love it. Thank that's my whole, my, my whole year is about. Mm-hmm. Yes, because what season are we? I mean, not season. What quarter are we in? What you mean? I think this is going to the second. The second quarter. quarter? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spring season. Do you see free? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm like quarter. You know, you got the quarters. Like you're in first quarter, second quarter, you're in your third quarter. Okay. You know, ne- you don't hear people say that for him. No. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you for, Thank coming, you for coming. Thank y'all so much for having me. We had so Listen. much fun. Yes, yes. we, we really week. went. To, we, you Listen. know, you can come back.
back, you'll be our realtor. Right. I would love to come back. Especially all the gems and the knowledge that yes. you brought. Like, people are going to be like, wait a minute. Listen. Oh, can I say one more thing? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And you got to give us this your hand over. Yes. Mark. So another thing with Women's History Month, did you know 20% of homebuyers last year were single women? I believe wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I believe, I believe that for real, it. too. Yeah. They yeah. some go-getters. Go like yes, Because what right. I was saying last week, and you was chewing me out on the live, the man said that. He said that women are not waiting for men to get what they want. They're mm-hmm. buying houses. They're they buy. I talk to you. They buying houses and they're getting, you know, their own careers and stuff. They're not waiting on a man to do anything. And so I believe it. Well, they got to step the game up. Because I feel like majority of not majority, but it's like half and half. So like half of my friends, they got their houses before they even got married. They bought their own house. They was like, forget it. I want a house. I'm buying it. And I think that that's what every woman should do. Some people are like, you know, no, I want to wait for my mate to buy a house. Yeah. Girl, no. If you gonna do it, do it. Like. Go out there and get whatever you want. Don't sit up there and wait on that man so that you can, yeah. you know, do, do if you can do it, do it. Yeah. You know, sell the house when you get married or um, yeah. whatever. Yep. Just- yeah. I know. I, I will. Just one quick story. So, what well, not be story, but would you suggest that a single woman go ahead and get a home? Because I know some women are like, you know, they want to wait on a mate. Or they want to go in with like buy a house because they feel like it's better, you know, the two incomes and things like that. Like I would definitely tell them not to wait. Okay. Like <clears throat> I bought my house before we got married, mm-hmm. and it's still big enough for both of us. So, okay. I mean, we're we have a really good interest rate, mm-hmm. a really nice monthly payment. I'm not mad about it. And if we decide to sell and get something bigger, yeah. As our family grows, we have a lot of equity, mm. you know, so it's Talk like about it. versus me having rented or continuing to rent. Like You're I wouldn't have nothing. nothing. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so now it's like I could take a hundred grand from my house and take it and put it towards another house. Mm-hmm. Or if I had to just not did that, then I wouldn't have that. OK. Equity. So That's I would definitely say don't wait. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Because I know someone that she was like, yeah, no, I. I want to buy with someone else. Yeah, but but she ended up, but she ended up buying, but she bought something that was like you know like it was smaller okay. than what like you know a four bedroom house. She ended up just buying, uh, I think it was like a two, it was like a condo or something like that, because mm-hmm. she was like I didn't want to buy nothing big because I'm waiting on this man. Well, that's a start. Yeah, it's she, better than yeah just nothing. Yeah, yeah, just an apartment waiting on him to come. Yeah. Because he might not have no intentions of ever buying a house. Y'all still in that apartment. <laughs> Listen. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you again, Tracy, yes, for Tracy. coming to Think Us Later podcast. Guys, let us know. I have questions for her. Because listen, I got a lot of questions. Your, your IG handles and yes, stuff? Oh, yes, please. Yes, yes. So, my Instagram and my TikTok, if you ever. Come on, TikTok. Like watching videos of houses. And okay. All that good stuff. Oh, so you go, you do tours? I do do tours. Oh, uh, come on, tours. Yes. yes. It is I called Latrice, I C A L L E D. Mm hmm. L A T R E A S E. So not spelled lat rice, just spelled L A T R E A S E. So if you're looking for me, Latrice. I call it Latrice. And then um, I also have a YouTube channel. Yes. Okay. Come on, YouTube. Real Talk Real Estate with Latrice Posey. So talk about all types of stuff from how to become a real estate agent mm-hmm. to, you know, just tips and advice on qualifying. Oh. Oh yes, we we are gonna tag them, aren't we? Friend? Yes, we are. Because we need our friend. People, our listeners want to want to buy. Wanna all they want to buy give y'all, y'all everything to yes. set your life up. So yes. we will put that on our social media, on our Instagram. Thank us later podcast, and you know our email. Y'all don't be emailing us, but I'll tell you anyway. Yeah. Thank us later. <laughs> <laughs> podcast at gmail.com weigh in on our topics let us know how we're doing and look friend yes this is episode number five this is episode number five we've been consistent it's loaded, y'all, y'all better get it it's can loaded you, can you sing one more song to Oops. let us know? oh she not she want her to sing uh uh-uh. uh she want her to sing <laughs> she talked about uh, us harmony uh, thank us later thank us later <laughs> Bye, guys.